Stugatz here buying tickets to sports and concerts can be complicated, but there is a better, simpler way to buy with SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the smartest, easiest way to get tickets to live events. With SeatGeek's seamless mobile experience, you can buy and sell tickets in just two taps. SeatGeek helps you find the best seats at the best prices, fully guaranteed. There's nothing quite like seeing your favorite team or musician in person, and SeatGeek will get you closer to the action for a great value. I have the SeatGeek app on my phone, and it's by far the easiest way i found to shop for tickets. I could be anywhere, and with just a few taps, I can instantly find seats. SeatGeek is designed to make your ticket-buying experience easier than ever. SeatGeek saves you time and money by searching multiple ticket sites to compare prices and find amazing deals. Make SeatGeek your go-to app for finding the best deals on every type of ticket, from sports and concerts to comedy and theater. Best of all, my listeners get $20 off their first SeatGeek purchase. Just download the SeatGeek app and enter promo code LEBITARD today. That's L-E-B-A-T-A-R-D. That's promo code LEBITARD for $20 off your first SeatGeek purchase. Hello, the Internet. It's Jack O'Brien, the founder and former editor-in-chief of Crack.com and the host of the new comedic news podcast, The Daily Zeitgeist, which, as the name suggests, is daily and sporadically in German. If you like Cracked, How Stuff Works podcasts and want to get your news from some of the smartest and funniest comedic and journalistic minds around, well then, this show is going to make you all over the place. Yeah, I don't think we can use that. Sure we can. Go to Apple Podcasts to listen and subscribe. This is the worst of the Dan Levatar show with the Stugatz podcast. Texter writes in, Matt Patricia having that pencil under his head is the worst thing in football. His sheet is laminated. Get over yourself, Patricia. <laughs> Guillermo, put it on the poll. Is Patricia faking it with that pencil behind his ear and a laminated play sheet? It's such a great take. It really is. <laughs> is Case Keenum good? Is that a thing now? I don't know. Okay. Uh. I uh, I was loud wrong this weekend. It's been a long time. It's been a long time since I've been that loud and wrong. And Stugatz is saying that uh, today should be declared a national holiday. It's been a week. Not that loud and wrong. Uh, you were pretty loud and wrong with Virginia Tech. No, <laughs> I, it wasn't like this. No, uh. <laughs> that's unfair. That it wasn't. No. I have not been this loud wrong. There, This goes in the conversation with picking the Detroit Lions to make the playoffs the year they went 0-16 right. and uh, saying there was a 0% chance that Randy Shannon would ever become the head coach of the University <laughs> of Miami. And then he was named head coach shortly thereafter. Uh, but this goes on, on the pantheon of bad predictions because Miami smoked Notre Dame this weekend. Miami has put itself in the national conversation in a way that not even Wisconsin has. Wisconsin is unbeaten, and everyone is still questioning Wisconsin, but that's what beating this Notre Dame team will do for you. Right. Now, Wisconsin did move up to to number five, so they'll have some chances here. They have Michigan. They'll probably play Ohio State in the championship game. Yeah, but the way Miami won got everyone's attention. Oh, no doubt. Of course. I had to. That was a Notre Dame team that did that to USC. And so college football is just total insanity right now. I mean, you could have had one, two, and three lose for the first time ever in the history of the sport this week, and and you didn't have it just because Alabama squeaked it out late. And they squeaked it out late with a fourth and four conversion. They squeaked it on the road, a fourth and four conversion. They had a third and 13 where the announcers were saying there is no way Alabama will put the ball in the air on this play, and then they did, and then they scored a touchdown and won the game. Um. But you almost had one, two, and three lose, and now you look at the top of the sport, and it's total chaos. It's uh, it's pretty amazing that college football. I, I really do. I believe they have it figured out. It's like they have playoffs the entire year before they get to their actual playoffs. It is going to really become though about the the final four is going to end up becoming about when did you lose, not how did you lose or who did you lose to. It's gonna the final four is going to be like. Um, just did you lose recently? It's like if the NFL were to do it that way, all of a sudden the Saints would be in the Final Four. Um, the NFL doesn't 
do it that way. The Saints, we all had the Saints done at 0-2, and not only done, but the window closed on yes. on Peyton and Breeze. Closed. Correct. And yeah. now all of a sudden they've got a running game and a defense. Right. A running game and a defense, the Saints do. Their weakness was always how would they play on the road outside, like bad weather, cold weather games, because they were always throwing the ball. They never had a great defense. Now they run the ball, and they have a great defense. You're we right. We were sitting here uh, saying to ourselves, five weeks into the season, Nobody's any good. If the Chiefs are the only unbeaten, nobody's any good. And now all of a sudden, the NFC looks like a gauntlet. All of a sudden. I mean, you want Vikings, you want Saints, you want Seattle. You want, I mean, the, the wild cards are Dallas and Atlanta. You want them? Like, now now the NFC looks like you, you've seen what separated itself. The Rams? The, oh, I didn't even mention the Rams. Right. Did you mention Carolina? I mean, I don't feel like they're in that conversation. But when Dallas and Atlanta are playing for your wild cards, your your conference is really good. Yep. Uh, can you get Paul Feinbaum's voice there? Paul Feinbaum has declared it. Paul Feinbaum uh, was wearing the turnover chain. I, I want you to keep an eye on that. That'll stop being cute the more Miami wins. Keep an eye on that. I, it's, I, I promise you that that will – if Miami continues to ravage people like that bear in the Revenant – if the, if Miami continues four turnovers a game, defenses it's safe this year though, right? Like the the charm of it, right, will not wear off at any point. I don't this know. You're year. seeing an awful lot of it because the last two network games, you've seen it eight times. Like right. people will turn on that. That will not get to be popular thing applauded for a long time. I think for now though, it's still a feel good story. Okay. The Miami Hurricanes okay. and that change. I'm just telling you, watch for it. No, I agree. I, I understand. I'm just that. telling you, keep an eye out for right. people doing that. Okay. Oh, I think it jumped the shark when Feinbaum put it on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It was like when Frank Beamer did the dab. We were like, okay, that's enough. Everyone stop. When De- when Frank Beamer did it, it's like, okay, that right there is where it's over. <laughs> and I believe this might be where it's over for the turnover, Shane. Is the U back? The U oh! is back. What happened? Nothing. You were headed towards a, uh, I was saying during the local hour that today should be a national holiday where only Dan Levitard can be wrong, and you were headed down that path, and you stopped your sentence because I interrupted you. Right, but, right, yes. uh, as you are prone to do. Yeah. But I do believe that this should be a day where you cannot point out, regardless, and I think it should be an annual thing, regardless of how outlandish it is that any, you know, the the, the take that anyone gives, how wrong it is, you cannot point out today that anyone is wrong because you, Dan Levitard, are the only one who is I wrong. am the most yes. wrong today. Yes. I feel I feel like yeah, I feel like that should be a thing. If Donald Sterling, for example, were to do something today that got him banned from the league, I would not be able to say that he was wrong because I was more wrong. Yeah, today is your day. Today yes. I am your the, day. I am the most wrong. <laughs> how do we make this like a holiday? So and on this day every year, because of how wrong I was about Notre Dame Miami, <laughs> I will not be able to say anyone else is wrong about anything. <laughs> Even if like OJ Simpson did that today. Right. No, and I would never be able to say anyone was wrong. What is today's date? Let's mark it as an official holiday. What is it, a couple of days after after Veterans Day? It is the 13th of November. Yeah. Your day. All right. Oh, man, I'd really like to follow this. Do you have the self-discipline to do this? Oh, yeah, that's fine. I, I will go the entire show today. In fact, you pointed out I'll take fines every time I mention that anyone's wrong about anything. I could say whatever I want. You can't yes, point out that I'm wrong. Right. Just yes. anyone? Not, not even us. Like, anyone in the nation. But wait a minute. Like, what if Stugatz is factually wrong about something? Doesn't matter. You can't point it out. Yeah, someone else will have to jump on that. (laughs) Can we test this? I mean, okay, it's going to be hard. Yeah, we can test it. How do you feel the NFL owners have approached this whole Kaepernick thing? I, I, um, we're not going to do a good show today, but I think I can do this. (laughs) (laughs) What? You got to hear both sides? No, I'm not going to be able to do any of this today if I can't say anyone's wrong about anything. So, all right, let's see what that sounds like. Next. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. We'll compare rates for you so you get the best deal, even if it's not with us saving you time and money. Now that's Progressive. Call or click today. 
The Dan Levitard Show is brought to you by ZipRecruiter.com. Try it for free by going to ZipRecruiter.com slash Dan. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash Dan. Here's your Sports Center update. Monday Night Football, Jake Cutler and the Dolphins travel to Carolina to play Cam Newton and the Panthers. 8.30 Eastern on ESPN and simulcast in Spanish on ESPN2. The Miami Hurricanes have jumped to number two in the AP poll. Alabama is number one. Oklahoma comes in at number three. Clemson, number four. Wisconsin is number five. The result of Auburn's upset of Georgia caused both teams to be ranked sixth and seventh, respectively. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. More than a stool from the Clevelander on ESPN Radio. Catch me and Mike Gola Jr. every Sunday for weekend observations from 7 to 9 a.m. Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. The Dan Levitard Show is brought to you by Upside.com, giving all business travelers the gift of a better travel experience this holiday season. Check them out today at Upside.com. Mike, play it every segment. Guillermo, put it on the poll. Uh, Mike doesn't want to play this every segment because it's two minutes long. And he thinks people want show on Monday. And I'm of the opinion that there is nothing better than me loud wrong. And people will take that every segment. So, Guillermo, first of all, put it on the poll at Levitard Show. Should we play the Dan is wrong montage every segment this show? Yes or no? And in the interim, play it again. (laughs) Before they get to decide. Just play it again. So I'm wrong about that is what you're saying? I'm uh, not saying you're wrong about that. To play it again. I'm just asking you to play it again. But somebody has said here, I think this is the good compromise. A texter writes in, Dan, point out that people are wrong today, but you must add every single time, but not as wrong as I was about Miami Notre Dame. And if I forget, I get fined for it. So then the next guy writes in, hey, Dan, Trump is the best president ever, and you're a company man. Now, I think you're wrong, sir, but not as wrong as I was about Notre Dame beating Miami. So great. I got to be honest, that little caveat you just threw in there kind of takes the sting. It ruins loud wrong day. It does. Does it? Yeah, like you shouldn't be able to point it out. The fun of it is your head exploding because you can't simply can't say that anyone's wrong about is anything. Is that the way you think we like, should do it? That I, today is, is da- November 13 has been declared and notarized as Dan is loud wrong day. <laughs> It'll be a celebration every year. Put it in the calendar. That'll be the day every year that I simply uh, can't say anyone else is wrong. But I feel like Stugatz is just doing that because Stugatz wants to run free. I don't believe he's doing that. For the good of the radio show, I think Stugatz, this is what Stugatz, what I've always told Stugatz is, left to his own devices, he will ruin him, his own career, uh, everyone else's career, and the network. Left to his own devices. He needs to be reined in, and Disney, and while we're at it, and television, and entertainment. Like, if left to his own devices... That's a bit of a stretch. I don't believe... I, 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 well, I'm wrong. I'm clearly wrong because it's wrong day. Yeah, and it kind of feels like you're telling me I'm wrong. The whole way I've gone about my career is yeah. is is wrong. I T- mean, Texter writes in, Dan Kaepernick is clearly not qualified to play in the NFL. He couldn't even take Tom Savage's job. I mean, guy's right. Wait a minute. There's no stops between right and wrong? <laughs> <laughs> it's not even that I can't point out that they're wrong. I have to agree that they're right. That seems extreme. Everyone else gets to be right. No, I just think that no one else today gets to be criticized by me as wrong. That doesn't get. The, that doesn't mean they get to be right. They just means they they escape my withering judgment. Okay, I'll take that. That's a happy settlement. I'm fine with that. Do you think that's the best way to do it? Because that way's not costing me any money. I think that way is the best way to do it. All right. So everyone's got free reign today to say whatever they want without objection from me. Good, because I want to talk about this entire Miami defense that's getting drafted in the first two rounds at least. Yeah, you've earned it. Looked like that on Saturday night. Uh, It was very clear. Everyone's jumping on board now. Oh, yeah. Is everyone jumping on board? I'm asking the question. Is If I said to you right now, the country knows that Miami is playing Auburn, or Georgia, never mind Alabama, Auburn or Georgia or Clemson, the country's jumping on Miami there? Uh, in terms of just defensive units? No, just I believe in Miami as a team. Oh, as a team, probably If Miami not. played Auburn next weekend, you think Miami would be the betting favorite? Where are they playing them? Yeah, it depends where they're playing. You think Miami's a betting favorite against everyone at home except Alabama? 
Um, they were three and a half point dog to the number three team in the nation. So you know that no matter what, it's going to be tight. I don't think they'd be favored against Clemson at home. You don't? No, well, we saw the advance lines. I don't know where they are now, but last week on a neutral neutral field, and this was before the Notre Dame game, the advance line on that ACC championship game was Clemson. That's, six that, and a the half. thing that's happened the last two weeks that cannot be disputed is Miami has entered the national conversation and forced everyone to pay attention, not just because it won in prime time with record ratings numbers on ESPN for the year, for college game day. It's the way they won because that's not happening a lot this year in college football where you're seeing you might see one of the top teams beat you, you Clemson right. lost but they didn't lose like that no that's it that's that's the big difference the Canes win that game by a field goal I don't think we're that surprised it's the way they won that game I mean, Oklahoma lost to out. Iowa State yes. but didn't lose like that right Georgia was ranked number one over Alabama on the strength of their one point victory over Notre Dame right and now Georgia right and now Georgia lost like that Georgia lost the way that Notre Dame lost this weekend. The number one team in the country. How about that for college football? The number one team and the number three team in the country both lost like that. Money, 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 money. We got a lot of football to talk about today. Also, I want to get to this Louis C.K. thing. Between dropping off and picking up the kids from school and bumper-to-bumper traffic, going to and from work, wouldn't you like to know how your car is doing? Doing. Use Hum by Verizon to find out. Tell them more, Stuka. Yep, I have it. I absolutely love it. It really is. It's it's fantastic. The peace of mind is absolutely amazing. I get an email every single day. Every day I get an email telling me how my car is doing. My car is health. Today, battery, no alerts. Alternator, no alerts. Coolant, no alerts. Powertrain, good. Electrical, good. Mechanical, good. Wiring, good. Emissions, good. I love it. It's great peace of mind. Hum is the connected car system that helps you know what you need to know about your car. I love it because I can check my car's health from my phone anytime I want, get help if I'm stuck on the side of the road, and if Hum detects a crash, it automatically uh, notifies emergency services. Guys, the peace of mind is absolutely amazing. It's affordable. The technology is absolutely amazing. And it's a smart way to stay informed about your car and those who drive it and keep your family safer on the road. What's better than that? Get home and get where you're going. Learn more today at hum.com. You're listening to the titillating Dan Levatar Show on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. The Dan Levitard Show is brought to you by Pennzoil Synthetics, taking synthetic motor oil performance to a whole new level. Make the switch to Pennzoil Synthetics today. Guest on the Dan Levitard Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Here's your Sports Center update. Monday Night Football, Jake Cutler and the Dolphins travel to Carolina to play Cam Newton and the Panthers. 8.30 Eastern on ESPN and simulcast in Spanish on ESPN2. The Miami Hurricanes have jumped to number two in the AP poll. Alabama, number one. Oklahoma, number three. Clemson, number four. And Wisconsin is number five. And finally, avocados are poisonous to birds, cats, dogs, and rabbits. Basically, all pets are allergic to avocados. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. All right, you guys have boxed me in. Mike Ryan doesn't want to play the montage anymore. The people on the internet have voted that the montage of me being loud wrong plays every segment during the show. Mike Ryan is defying you, and he's leaning on the rule that I can't say he's wrong. Right. I do whatever he wants, and you can't. I mean, not until you know twelve oh one this evening can you uh, call Mike Ryan and tell him he was wrong about his decision. But the people have voted. I don't. Yep, the yep. people have voted. The people have said they want to hear that me being wrong every segment. Right. And you guys are defying the orders of the people. You're not defying my order. You're defying the order of the people. I'm not doing anything, man. Mike, I'm... you're endorsing Mike's behavior. Well, you I'm just saying that you can't. You're the one who pointed out I can't tell him he's wrong. Yeah, it feels like you're telling me I'm wrong. No, about I'm something. saying no. I'm saying that you're the reason for this. Wait a minute. Do you want me to not? All right. I'm going to shut up. You do the show. <laughs> no, because you're not going to let me say anything. No, I would love to hear you chime in. It just sounds like you're telling me I'm wrong for not listening to the people. You're not. I'm just saying you're not listening to the people. You're just declaring that I am. But you're, you're not telling me that I'm wrong in doing that, right? I, I, I will tell you, Mike, that there's another poll up at Levitard Show. What's better, 
Dan being loud, wrong, or great sex, and 53% of the audience is choosing Dan being loud, what wrong, or great sex. What I'm telling you is sex. people want to hear me being wrong. They love the know-it-all eating crow. And I'm sitting here, I can't believe I'm endorsing it, because I have been rarely this kind of loud, wrong about anything, ever. In my history of being loud, wrong, a long and distinguished history of being loud, wrong, I've rarely been this loud, wrong about anything. I feel as if there's a, a compromise that I can make here with the people. Um, once an hour, twice an hour, perhaps. All I'm telling the people is this isn't my responsibility. I am not shutting this down. I am advocating for it being every segment. But you've already seen now what the, what happens when I lose control of this situation. The people get denied. Yeah, don't blame us. You did this to yourself. Yeah, man. yeah. He's, he's blaming us. Yeah. I mean, you were wrong about the Miami Hurricanes. We were right, and this is on you. It's not on us. So, I mean, perhaps you're right about this montage. What what do you mean? What do you mean? It's what's on me? The people voted to play the montage every segment. This predicament that you found yourself in, where you can't tell people that they're wrong. Right. That's a a hell of your own design. Yeah. So, but I just want to declare, you are actively declaring that a 61 to 39 vote. Doesn't matter. You're simply rejecting it, thus setting the precedent for me, who has made this a democracy. It's not surprising at all that the moment that Mike Ryan gets in charge of the rules, this is what he does with them. You're declaring the precedent of now I could just overturn 61 to 39 rulings on the Internet when I've thrown it out to a vote. My whole intention was to keep the show moving and not have to be beholden to a two minute clip. But instead, what I've had here mm-hmm. not playing it is four minutes of us talking about a clip that we didn't play. So then you play. should probably just play it and then I wouldn't talk about it anymore. Mike uh, spent six hours hunting down that sound. He is so sick of all of that sound. He doesn't want to hear it ever again. He just declared while it was playing that he doesn't want it to play ever again. How is it that you guys are allowing? How are we in a position where me being loud wrong is something that you're already sick of after seven segments today? I mean, the texters, they want it in a loop for the entire show. They do. I'm telling you right now, people are texting saying, I don't know. They voted pretty strongly that they want to hear me be loud wrong all show. Uh, what's going on here with Jeb Bush? Why is he on Twitter going into Kane thing? Uh, and wh- I mean, when did he become a hurricane? He said uh, during the game, it is official. We are back. Um, so I, I, if he but, wants to be on board, I'm with it. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't aware of no, this. No, wait, put this on the poll. Guillermo at Lebitard show, show. Hey, you. Hey, comma, the letter U. Do you want Jeb Bush? Yes or no? Jeb Bush is on Twitter saying it's a cane thing. Right. I mean, come on, man. Is there anyone in the history of it's a cane thing less it's a cane thing than Jeb Bush? He went to Texas. What's he doing? It's Chuck Todd. No, but Chuck Todd went to UM. Right. What is Jeb Bush doing? Put that on the poll, Guillermo. Is there anyone in the history of it's a cane thing less it's a cane thing than Jeb Bush? I want to get to this story. You see what's happening here with Goodell, Stugatz? It's crazy what's happening with Goodell. It is, uh, yeah, it is great with the extension and Jerry Jones and Arthur Blank and Arthur Blank and Jerry Jones are not saying a single word to each other yesterday. At but, the game. but what do you think of the idea of Roger Goodell? Asking for a contract extension that pays him forty nine point five million a year and gives him a lifetime private jet. <laughs> the cantaloupes on that guy. I love it. I mean, that is an unbelievable ask. Like, have you not been paying attention to what you did during the Ray Rice stuff? Clearly, he hasn't. Like, oh, like that is an unbelievable ask. As the players fight for lifetime benefits, I mean, are you? He's asking for forty nine point five million, and also lifetime jet, not private jet. While I'm in office, my family's going to vacations on that thing. When I go, that thing goes with 20 me. Twenty years from now. <laughs> What I mean, talk about overplaying your hand. No, nah, he's playing it perfectly. If you're making $50 million a year, you can afford the private Everybody jet. Everybody in the media was calling for his firing a year ago. The cantaloupes on that guy, 49 and a half mil a year, and also private jet while I work for you, and private jet long after I don't work for you. <laughs> Splash! I don't see anything wrong. I with can't that. say he's wrong though. 
Yeah. I can't say he's wrong. I don't see anything wrong with it. I mean, you don't know unless you ask, right? Goodell thinks he did that Ray Rice thing right. Thanksgiving is coming up, and you need a place setting. If you get a bouquet from 1-800-Flowers, you get more compliments about the flowers than you would the turkey. Tell them, Stu guys. Yep, right now, 1-800-Flowers is giving our listeners a special 24 for 24 offer. 24 multicolored roses for just $24. That's only a dollar per rose. 24 multicolored roses is a perfect way to surprise your loved one for the holiday season or any reason. This beautiful bouquet of two dozen roses in a rainbow of colors We'll leave your loved one stunned without spending a fortune. It's the best of both worlds. Amazing roses at an unbeatable price. These gorgeous roses from 1-800-Flowers are picked at their peak and shipped overnight to ensure freshness. 24 multicolored roses, just $24. It's an incredible deal, but it expires Friday. There's 1-800-Flowers.com, and then there's everybody else. You know who I trust and depend on for meaningful holiday moments? It's 1-800-Flowers. To order 24 multicolored roses for just $24, it's simple. Go to 1-800-Flowers.com, click the radio icon, enter code DAN. That's 1-800-Flowers.com, code DAN. But you better hurry. The offer ends on Friday. You're listening to the sensational Dan Levatar Show on ESPN Radio. Catch more of the Dan Levatar Show with the Stugats, 10 to 1 Eastern on ESPN Radio and ESPNU. Hi, everyone. Stu Gatz here. Support for the Dan Levitard Show podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Chances are you're confident when it comes to your work, your hobbies, and your life. Rocket Mortgage gives you that same level of confidence when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your existing home loan. With Rocket Mortgage, you can apply simply and understand fully so you can mortgage confidently to get started. Go to rocketmortgage.com slash Stu Gatz, S-T-U-G-O-T-Z, Equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, nmlsconsumeraccess.org number 3030. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance, creators of the Name Your Price tool. Choose from a range of coverage options and pick the price that works for you. Guest on the Dan Levitard Show appear via the Shell Penzoil performance line. Here's your Sports Center update. Monday Night Football, Jay Cutler and the Dolphins travel to Carolina to play Cam Newton and the Panthers. 830 Eastern on ESPN and simulcast in Spanish on ESPN2. Tennessee, winless, uh, winless this season in SEC play, has fired fifth-year head coach Butch Jones with two games left in the regular season. And finally, it's reported that Gal Gadot will not play Wonder Woman uh, uh, again unless Brett Ratner's association with the franchise is severed completely. Warner Brothers told Page Six that the report is patently false and Gadot's publicist did not respond to messages seeking confirmation Ratner was a producer on Wonder Woman and his company, Rat Pack Dune, partnered with Warner Brothers to co-finance the movie, meaning it owns a piece of the $821 million and counting in worldwide box office earnings. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. Got a lot to get to today. Useless sound montage, funniest thing of the sports weekend, Stugatz's weekend observations, all of that is around the corner. But let's start with the funniest thing from the sports weekend. Hey, people, tell us what in the sport made you laugh hardest this weekend. It is a segment we call What Made You Laugh This Weekend. (laughs) Ha, ha, ha. Funniest thing from the sports weekend is brought to you by Office Depot. This season, take care of business by treating yourself to great tech and furniture from Office Depot, Office Max. Allison Turner, what was the funniest thing from the sports weekend? The New York football Giants. There you go. Good, a good selection right there. Macca doomed. We're going to miss him. The tabloids are doing a lot of Macca doomed. Yep. That team's physically broken. They won so many one-score games last year. They lost all their wide receivers in one game. And now it's lost the locker room nonsense. You can't look like that and be losing. Yeah, you can't have a Jeff Fisher mustache. You can't have a Dave Wanstead mustache. Like, right. if you're going to look like that, you have to win. Correct. What is the look you need for acceptable Not McAdoo. Losing? Whatever the opposite of McAdoo is. He's 39 years old, and he right. looks like a struggling hot tub outlet manager. He even knew that. He changed his look this season. I know. Season. He tried, but it's ridiculous. You need to change his look. You need to change your look before you got the job. Now everybody's on to you. Guillermo, uh, what uh, what is the funniest thing from the sports weekend? As Chris Collinsworth last night on Sunday Night Football was praising Brock Osweiler for being good, he said he looks t- better, he looks sharp out there, he looks good tonight. He uh, he threw an interception. Yeah, of course he did. 
What he throw? He tried to do a throw six yards downfield. He also hit some dude in the head on the sideline. Mike Ryan went to bed chortling with laughter watching that video ten times. Some dude on the sidelines. Brock Osweiler's, of course, throwing the ball away on second and six because of that menacing Patriots pass rush. His hat flew off. Yeah, he, and he just he just hit a guy right in the forehead with the tip of the football. People people ran to him afterwards. Yes, it was great. That happened to Herb Street too, by the way. He was saying how much better how much better Notre Dame's offense was looking with the the quarterback switch, and the very next play was a pick six. A pick six. <laughs> I um I have I can't remember the last time. In fact, I asked you this question: When was the last time any of you saw the quarterback of the number three team in the country look scared? Because they benched him because he was scared. That he got that kid got benched in the second quarter because the avalanche had fallen on his head, and Brian Kelly didn't want to trust a quarterback who was scared. Right. I'm surprised because you usually don't agree or go to that place where you I mean, can that's see why they, it in that's, his that's eyes. That's the why they benched stuff, him. That's right. why they benched him. He was throwing screen passes, scared. He was just right. he had way too much on the ball. Like he wasn't he wasn't emotionally flatlined. Even if you don't say he was scared that he wanted it too much. Still, whatever was happening with that kid was all of it was too much for him. In your defense, you were mostly wrong about the game. But in your defense, you did say young quarterback going into an environment that he hadn't played in, and you said if Notre well, Dame can't run the ball, it's no. Be but a long here's night. the th- yeah, the Notre Dame Miami game. This is this is what had to be exasperating to Notre Dame, and this is how he came upon fear. Right. Wait a minute. Our strength's not a strength. Our greatest strength, running the football. Right. We can't do it. Now what? Oh, bleep, it's on me. Yep, I got to win them a game. Oh, bleep, yeah. it's on me. I'll go sit over there. Put someone else in. <laughs> oh, bleep, he's worse than I am. Yes. Get back in Oops. Uh, Roy, what was the funniest thing from the sports weekend? Paul Feinbaum dancing with the tunnel of a chain on yeah. Sports Center. Yeah, it was pretty good. Paul. Uh, Mike, funniest thing from the sports weekend. And it was a really fun weekend. Uh, I really like the CFL celebration, but I'm going to go with uh, Conor McGregor's uh, celebration. He had a teammate win. I think it might have been a Bellator fight. I'm not exactly sure. It wasn't a UFC card, I don't think, but it was in Dublin, and he was celebrating so vigorously. He jumped over the rail, and, and he was so happy. And the guy was just in an MMA fight. He was pretty beat up. He needed treatment. The referee was trying to get Conor McGregor out of the, the ring. And he was, like, hugging him, like, knocked him on the ground from the hug and pretended to pound and ground and pound him in celebration. It was a great celebration, but the referee was trying to get uh, maintain order in that uh, ring, and then that turned into Conor McGregor trying to fight the referee for getting into his celebration with his teammate. Uh, the Chaos. C- the ensued. CFL celebration was really good. The, they did. They lifted two guys lifted their teammate up into the bar, and another teammate. Did the lambada underneath him? What was your uh, funniest thing from the sports weekend? A Rod on game day. Turnover chain was backwards. The baby not giving him a high five. He still came out looking great, but I mean, just A Rod on game day. Yeah, twelve and zero in picks, right? Yeah, yeah. Twelve and zero in picks. Um, put the chain on backwards and broke it. Um, I thought the funniest thing from the sports weekend was everything that happened at the end of the Chargers Jacksonville game because ah. it kept snowballing. Okay, Blake Bortles is going to get to the bleeping Super Bowl that way, throwing two interceptions in the last two minutes, and they win anyway because Phillip Rivers is on the sidelines. It's going to be amazing to watch Blake Bortles stumble his way to the Super Bowl. Ah, oh, damn. You know what? I should have went with the, the, the Juju Smith-Schuster celebration that he had with the teammate where they reenacted the Jalen Ramsey-A.J. Green fight with the chokehold takedown from behind. There were a lot of good celebrations this weekend. But the thing that I was telling you, I didn't get to finish. The starting point on that Chargers-Jags game was Marquise Lee is trying to catch a ball over the middle in the end zone. He gets hit with what looks like a legal hit but might not be a legal hit because what are the rules anymore? Helpless receiver, targeting, uh, all of that stuff. And so Marquise Lee was a helpless receiver, but the, 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 the hit appeared to be clean. They are down three. They are in field goal range, and the ref throws the flag, and that's going to get them even closer at field goal range late in the game. But what then ends up happening is they pick up the flag and throw one on Marquise Lee because he was making love to the entire end zone, <laughs> dancing, impregnating, and they called him for taunting. <laughs> 
And so it, what ended up being not 15 yards for them ended up being 15 yards in the other direction. I'm pretty sure Bortles threw four or five interceptions after that, and the Jags won anyway. Why? Because Phillip Rivers plays for the other team. <laughs> Money, 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 money. Guillermo, put it on the poll. Is Blake Bortles going to stumble, bumble, and four interception his way <laughs> to the Super Bowl? <laughs> I sure hope it so. was. He was so bad late. Like, all he kept doing is, I thought the game was over. I, so guys, I'm not kidding you. He threw one interception, then I'm like, okay, that's over. The game's over. And then San Diego fumbled. And then he throws another interception. I'm like, well, clearly the game's over, right? And then, no, I don't know. They got the ball back with 20 seconds left, and they're kicking a field goal. I'm like, what? <laughs> got a football game tonight? You'll enjoy it even more with a nice glass of Larceny bourbon on the rock. Smooth taste for the intense action. Tell them, Stu Guy. Yep, we really love Larceny Weedy Bourbon, and so do you guys. We appreciate your support. They're supporting us. You support them. Just like a scout knows how to pick great players, their master distiller hand selects only the finest barrels. For a true small batch bourbon, Larceny Bourbon is award winning and made with more wheat for a smoother taste. It's bourbon making at its best. Move from the start, easy to drink and worth sharing. Get caught in the act. Unlock the smoothness of Larceny Bourbon today. Try some for yourself or pick some up and share it with friends. Think wisely, drink wisely. Larceny Bourbon, Bardstown, Kentucky, 46% alcohol by volume. I'm sorry, it was the limbo, not the lombada. The best in the business, Dan Levatar Show on ESPN Radio. Get in touch with the show anytime through the one eight hundred Flowers Twitter feed at Levitard Show at Stugat seven ninety. Dan, it is time for Straight Talk. It is brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless, best phones, best networks, no contracts. Stugatz is so comfortable dismissing others, but the idea that you would dismiss Tom Coughlin, two time Super Bowl champion, <laughs> with old red crusty beak. Get your old, red, crusty beak. Those are just facts, man. <laughs> I mean, his beak is red, those, and you know are, there's crust those, just all those, around the those perimeters. Are not facts. Yeah. Um, <laughs> facts. Old, red, crusty beak of Tom Coughlin. Um, Texter writes in, I apologize for taking so much pleasure in Dan being wrong. Um, let's, uh, let's go around the room here. We're going to get to uh, Guillermo's useless sound montage in a second but how did you guys enjoy the weekend miami felt like a college football town for the first time in 15 years college game days ratings were through the roof miami notre dame that game itself was a ratings monster the notre dame defensive coordinator was caught on a live microphone before the game uh, with sound we can't play Talking about, uh, I'm so sick of these chains. I'm so. It was a lot of white guys in suits. A lot of guys, uh, white guys in suits, sitting around, and there was a live microphone around. White guys, white, 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 white. And, and the defensive coordinator was saying, "We're not about chains. We're about rings." White guys, white, 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 white. What's wrong, Guillermo? What a ridiculous thing. Like, one one form of jewelry is better than the other. Like, it's both jewelry. Necklaces, <laughs> rings. What difference no, does it make? No, but that guy doesn't want change. He's sick of the change. He wants rings. White guys. Well, white, 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 white. I mean, the <laughs> defensive coordinator for Notre Dame talking like that. Like, you're the most useless guy in that entire field. Your defense is terrible. Like your defense isn't any good. Your team was good because of your offense. It wasn't anything you were doing. They're not getting a you, ring you, because you, of you. you. You need to stay away from live mics, sir. I was going to say you're wrong, but not as wrong as I was about my Notre Dame-Miami prediction, but no, I'm pretty much just as wrong. You, you, were, you were just as wrong as I was. You were equally wrong, defensive coordinator for Notre Dame, whose name I don't know. We'll let you slide on Thank that you. One. You got it. Uh, Guillermo, how do you feel about your useless sound montage, the NFL useless sound montage? It's okay this week. Doug Marone makes an appearance. Well, a few appearances. This is his coming out party, I think. Doug okay, Marone. I can't believe that uh, funniest thing from the sports weekend, nobody nominated John Fox. That was amazing. John Fox, if you were not watching, is the old crusty beaked face of the Chicago Bears. Ah. And old red crusty, excuse yes, me, old yes. red crusty beak. Get it right. Of the Chicago Bears. He had the ball at the one yard line. He challenged the call. 
because he thought it was a touchdown. They went to review and noticed that the running back, the ball was slipping out of his hand. Those pylons, that's making me crazy this season. I don't like that. I don't like how many touchbacks there are where you're you're an inch from the goal line and somebody knocks the ball out of your hand and then it's a touchback. I miss the days where the, uh, the end zone extended to the ends of the earth. This whole touchback rule, it's got me very confused. But John Fox actually challenged something that he shouldn't have challenged because he wanted one ble- extra bleeping yard. And in doing so, he cost his team and <laughs> the ball, Great. the points. And if you'd seen his face when the ruling came back, there was no one in the world more surprised by that than he was. It's such a great sentence by Mike. Can we make that a poll question? Do you also miss <laughs> when the end zone was extended to the ends of the earth? Because <laughs> Mike is right. It was. It, it was, was easier back then. The end yes. zone was just infinity. <laughs> yeah. Now, not only do you not have a touchdown, but you may be fumbling to get the touchdown and oh, it's the, the other team. The ball. worst example of that this year was that Safarian Jenkins one. I. I really do think that I'm, I'm getting bothered by something when it comes to replays, Dugat, in that I feel like there should be the, some spirit of the rule stuff there where people can just go, oh, come on, that was a touchdown. Right. I know technically the ball was jostling a little bit or whatever, but... It we depends how it affects my team. Like, that's the thing, Dan. Like, if it's, this, if it's the rule and it goes against me because spirit of the rule, I'm going to be upset about it. There needs to be a dude that just says... Come on, guys. Zach Miller just almost lost his leg. Yeah, touchdown. This is a touchdown. Right. Touchdown. It's the least we could do yes, for him. That's yes, that's right. Yes. Just a dude that overseeing hurts. things. That hurts, man. Come on. Or a committee. Uh, all right, Guillermo. Let's do it. Guillermo's NFL sound montage. We just didn't come out with the right recipe for success today well i think anytime you have a starter not there you know i think um you miss them you know that's why they're starters obviously working on a short week um those that limped out of the stadium probably don't have much of a chance i thought our guys had a little more pep in their step uh what's the big difference they scored more points than we did we played really good football uh for for uh a long time. Uh, just keep, man, just keep chopping wood and carrying water, man. Just keep out going, going to practice, practicing hard. And, you know, the, t- the tide going to turn, man. You know, it's kind of down right now, but the tide going to turn for us eventually. We just have to um, keep this momentum going. You know, uh, we got to ride the wave. Uh, we did what we felt we had to do. Obviously didn't get it done. Joe Hayden uh, has got a fibula fracture. Um, it's high on his leg. I don't know what that means. Obviously, Theo does what Theo does. I think I, every game so far, I felt pretty confident that I was getting better. And, and this is a, I was able to play the whole game. It wasn't bench. You know, the guys didn't blink and, and did to be given credit for that. I thought that was one of the better versions of our football team out there playing uh, today. Sometimes you're in rhythm, sometimes you're not. You know, there's a method to my madness, Mary Kay. Trust me. I know you guys don't think so. Everybody else probably would do it different, but everybody's not me. I'm a strong believer. Any ball thrown to me is a good ball. I mean, they didn't, I mean, they played their they played their butts off. I'm exhausted right now. Yeah, I'm shot. Like I'm I'm shot. You okay there, big boy? Huh? Need a nap? I'm, like I said, I'm taking a week at a time, and I'm I'm boring. I'm sorry. You know, I mean, it's it's the same. I'm gonna have the same answer uh, every week. I sit here, the players sit in this room. And I say, look, you know, hey, today is Wednesday. This is what we have to do on Wednesday. This is what we got to get done. Concentrate on Wednesday. Let's win Wednesday. Okay, if you don't win Wednesday, you don't win Thursday. You, you really don't have a chance to win on Sunday in this week. We played hard. They played hard. We lost a unanimous decision in a 12-round fight. He's a get-it-done kind of guy. You know, he's going to make some plays you maybe don't expect him to, and he, he might miss a couple plays you'd like him to make. The only thing that's on his back is just the little things. Yeah, you're right. I mean, this is this is, uh, this is is not easy to take, not easy to... Not an easy pill to swallow. You know, we got to learn how to finish games um, playing ahead. He's a splash playmaker. We, we need him and others to consistently make those type plays. We have to be hungry. We have to get our football right. We have to be disciplined. Be where we're supposed to be, when we're supposed to be there. Do it as well as we possibly can. Do it all the time. And it's between our ears. What was your question? Yeah, um, I just look at it as like you're trying to take food out of my daughter's mouth. I always tell the guys that and when that ball's in the air, I just got to go get it. Yeah, I mean, you're never going to win a game with four turnovers. I can... I can't promise you that, but I, I'm pretty confident you're not going to win a game with four turnovers. I can tell you right now. I'm going to go in. I'm going to take a shower. All right? I'm going to call my wife. Meet me at home. Pick up some bologna and cheese. I'm going to go out the back way. All right? I'm going to get in my car. I'm going to drive home. I'm going to listen to some music. Don't listen to the NFL. Don't listen to the scores or anything like that. Go home. Pet my dogs because we won. 
All right, and then, and then I'm just gonna. <laughs> yeah, it, it's not. It's not. Not as fun as you know. It's not like woohoo. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you know. That is that right there is the voice that you attach to Blake Bortles as your quarterback. <laughs> That is also Straight Talk. It is brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless, nationwide coverage on America's largest and most dependable 4G LTE network. Ha, ha, ha! This is the Dan Levata Show on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guest on the Dan Levitard Show appear via the Shell Penzoil performance line. Here's your Sports Center update. Monday Night Football, Jay Cutler and the Dolphins travel to Carolina to play Cam Newton and the Panthers, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN, and simulcast in Spanish on ESPN2. Tennessee, winless this season in SEC play, has fired fifth-year head coach Butch Jones with two games left in the regular season. And finally, a NASA group has announced plans for four missions to probe into Uranus to investigate all the gas in it. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. <laughs> yes. Um. Guillermo, put it on the poll. Are you surprised that the head coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars celebratory meal is a bologna and cheese sandwich? <laughs> this Doug Marone. He needs to hold up the trophy for me. Win everything. Smother Brady and Belichick with that defense. <laughs> time now for Stugatz's weekend observations. It is time for Stugatz to share his game notes. No one in the media will tell you what happened better than my boy Stu. Dan, you can't spell you were loud wrong without the U. Notre Dame, more like Notre Lame. See if you can follow the pattern here, Dan. The Knicks are better without Carmelo Anthony. The Thunder are worse with Carmelo Anthony. University of Washington. It was nice not knowing you. Number 86 on Notre Dame. You realize when you scored that touchdown that Miami was leading 34 to nothing. Mike Ryan was right. The entire front seven for the Miami Hurricanes are going pro. You sometimes struggle to imagine what athletes will do in retirement. Getting arrested for public intoxication. And tackling the lead singer of a country music band at an open mic night is exactly what I imagined retirement to look like for Josh Beckett. Best thing in sports, the angry, cold, frustrated face of Brian Kelly. Well, Georgia doesn't seem quite as good today. Georgia fired Mark Richt because he couldn't win big games. He spent the last two weeks winning big games. The turnover chain should win the Heisman Trophy. Nikola is no Jokic. Andrew Luck went to Europe to get his shoulder re-evaluated. Here's what a re-evaluation in Europe looks like. A needle of God knows what Mm -hmm. in Luck's shoulder, Mm -hmm. and he's good as new. Mm -hmm. Alabama, close call. The Bucks are better. Without Jameis Winston. You know who ate a W? Ryan Fitzpatrick. Oh, wow. Pittsburgh Steelers have weapons all over the field. Many thought the Vikings would go into the tank when they lost Sam Bradford and Dalvin Cook. Furthest thing from the case. Keenum. <laughs> you know how I know Jared Goff is good? Because suddenly, Dan, Robert Woods is good. Bad win for the Niners. Great loss for the Giants. My football Saturdays have become better than my football Sundays. Butch Jones, fired. Tennessee job, vacant. John Gruden, ESPN contract extension press release. Collision course. (laughs) Collusion course. You messed it up. I messed it up. That should be some sort of fun. I messed it up. Collusion course. Juju Schuster-Smith. Mocking A.J. Green. Man, that's not kosher. Tariq Cohen, 11 total yards. Oy vey. For (laughs) Russell Westbrook's birthday yesterday, Carmelo gave his teammate the gift of not playing. Cowboys tackle, Chaz Green, otherwise known as Turnstile. Never thought 
a member of the Munsters family would be able to beat a superhero. But Arthur Blank proved me wrong. He beat Plastic Man, Jerry Jones. Would it surprise anyone if Jerry Jones left the floater in the Falcons owner's suites? <laughs> That's the kind of thing Jerry Jones would do. Put it on the pole, Guillermo. Do you think Jerry Jones left a floater in his owner's suite? There's no doubt about it. Dak Prescott, more like Dak Prescott. Mike Golick, you've never put your hand in this kind of dirt. Every other sport, take notes from college football. Their entire season is a playoff. Amazing. How much healthier Martellus Bennett got simply by getting further away from Mike McCarthy and Brett Hundley. Congratulations to John Fox for being the first coach ever to challenge a positive play into a turnover. A-Rod and the camera. I don't know who loves who more. The coach of Team 12. Let's just call him Scott, who told me to stop talking to him on the sidelines of our championship lacrosse game. Scott, don't flatter yourself. I wasn't talking to you. I only talk to good coaches. What? And by the way, Scott, you wanted us in the finals, and you got us. And what ensued was a beatdown of epic proportions. Chris stops Porzingis. <laughs> and, well, Dan, we beat him good. I mean, this team 12. Scott. Bunch of nice kids, and I like them. But their, sco- uh, their coach, Scott... Not a nice man. And he thought I was talking trash to him, and I was not. You want to know why, Scott? I only talked to good coaches. And you wanted us, and you got us, and we beat you down. I mean, we beat you hard. But now you're talking I mean, my girls, coach. well, now I am. But listen, those are good girls. Team 12, you are good girls. I like you. I know many of you for many, many years. Our girls are just better. Sorry about that. Chris Stops, Porzingis, MVP, collision course. LeBron James said Dennis Smith Jr. should be a Nick. LeBron. Do me a favor. Worry about your own team. Brock Osweiler's most accurate pass being one that he threw out of bounds that hit a guy square in the head is so Brock Osweiler. Brock on. J.J. Watt posting a private letter from Jose Altuve all over social media is so J.J. Watt. It's also so Stugatz. Damn, I am J.J. Watt. I even have as many sacks as he does this season. The Bills were a breeze for the Saints. Dallas lost, the Giants lost, and the Redskins lost. The Eagles are so good, they even won on their bye week. Blake Bortles, he lost his team the game, even though they won. No one has less of a pulse for the Florida college football scene than Dan Lebitard. <laughs> FAU, FIU, Lane Kiffin, Butch Davis, Shula Bowl, more like the Greasy Bowl. FAU, FIU, the first ever winner leaves town match. Kiffin, Davis, yeah. whether it's the Florida job or inevitable NCAA infractions, one coach isn't making it out of that stadium, which can only mean one thing. Art Bryles is going to be watching this one very closely from hell. Yes! Dan! Yes! Those are the weekend yes! observations. Yes! Glory be to guts! <laughs> money, 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 money! I don't understand why you fell in love with the Steelers this weekend. Oh, they're good. But I they- think at Schuster, Martavius Bryant is now playing because he has no other choice. I mean, Antonio Brown, Le'Veon Bell, they, they are they, good. They weren't good this weekend. They just... Uh, well, they're 7-3, and three, man. They're okay. right in the mix. Okay. Not good. Watch it. I mean, no one wants to face Ben Roethlisberger in January. No one. Except the Patriots. Well, then. Dr. Pepper. Tell them more, Stu got. Yep, love Dr. Pepper. College football season. It's that time of year filled with coolers, cases, and cups of delicious ice-cold Dr. Pepper that leave us all craving for more... More big hits, strip sacks, flea flickers, onside kicks, pick sixes, tailgates, house parties, homecomings, rivalries, overtimes, double OTs, dual threat quarterbacks, comebacks, upsets, or any excuse to storm a field and tear down a goalpost. Others crave five-star recruits, cupcake schedules, Cinderella stories, a top 25 ranking, and of course, the college football playoff invented by Mr. Ice Cold Dr. Pepper himself, Larry Culpepper. Then... 
There are those weirdly specific cravings like a solid 50-50 raffle, the corn dogs at concessions, starting a chant, saying hi to your mom on the Jumbotron, a good old-fashioned mascot, uh, mascot fight, or maybe a fresh new koozie to keep your Dr. Pepper nice and cold. Fans covet lots of different things throughout the college football season, but there's only one thing fans crave all season long, the sweet, refreshing taste of an ice-cold Dr. Pepper. Grab some at your local store today and have yourself an excessive celebration with college football's greatest tradition. It's Dr. Pepper, the one fans crave. There is nothing better than the Dan Levatar Show on ESPN Radio. You want more of the Dan Levatar Show with the Stugats? Tune in starting at 10 Eastern on ESPN Radio and ESPNU. You can always count on Bud Light, just like you can always count on Tailgate Terry. Without Tailgate Terry, you wouldn't have cold Bud Lights and seven-layer dip at every pregame. That's 56 layers per season, just the right amount if you ask Terry. Tailgate Terry is famous among friends. He deserves a Bud Light. Enjoy responsibly Bud Light beer, A.B. St. Louis, Missouri. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests on the Dan Levitard Show appear via the Shell Penzoil performance line. Here's your Sports Center update. Monday Night Football, Jay Cutler and the Dolphins travel to Carolina to play Cam Newton and the Panthers, 830 Eastern on ESPN and simulcast in Spanish on ESPN2. After finally winning a World Series ring, Carlos Beltran has penned a goodbye letter to his fans in the Players' Tribune announcing his retirement. And finally, Nigeria is an international Scrabble powerhouse currently home to 29 of the top 100 English-language Scrabble players in the world. Smooth plays call for smooth bourbon. Larceny bourbon is made with with more wheat for a smoother taste. Our master distiller hand-selects only the finest barrels for a true small-batch bourbon. Get caught in the act with Larceny bourbon. Think wisely, drink wisely. Larceny bourbon, Bardstown, Kentucky, 46% alcohol by volume. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. So over the last two weeks in prime time, the University of Miami has announced itself as a college football power again. They are now ranked number two in the country, and they have some swagger. Yep. Now, the rules changed the last time the University of Miami had swagger. They have made, they have bleached college football. They have made it antiseptic. There is not a lot of personality. But with that turnover chain and furthermore, during that game, Miami's tiny receiver, Berrios, caught a touchdown pass and quietly and without penalty, not the backflips that the guys used to do and before they changed all the rules, he did a perp trot back to the sideline, put his hands behind his back as if a convict. There aren't very many places in college football where that's not getting flagged, where that's not getting noticed, where that's not getting penalized and sermonized about. But Miami's got some attitude. And even if Miami, even if you believe that Miami will lose in the next two weeks or is not ready for Clemson or doesn't belong in the conversation with the Final Four, all opinions that you're entitled to, even if you believe all that, though, this is the step. That game is the step that needs to be taken. You're on television. Everybody's watching. You're doing chain. You have swag. That is the thing that needs to happen in order for the dominoes to fall with a young team to create sustained winning where you are now going to be where FSU has been for the last 10 years. That's how that happens. Miami and FSU have never been good at the same time in that conference. It's not something that's ever been so. Miami, before that game, had not been in the ACC anything other than Vatek or NC State or North Carolina. They'd never made the final game. Now they're going to make the final game. And all the things that happened Saturday night, even if you don't believe the U is back for good, all the things that happened Saturday night are the things that needed to happen where you trample that team that way. Played out perfectly for the Canes. You look like you're having that much fun yes. on the sidelines. You yes. are trampling them in a way that makes the Notre Dame quarterback look scared. Right. And then get benched in a way that is Brian Kelly saying, I don't trust the guy I've trusted all season because I can now not trust 
the offensive line that has carried us all season. You bury that team that way with that many people watching with chains and perp walks. Like, that's how you get momentum on getting those recruits that everybody wants. I, and Rick's Rick's young people are very good, and his recruiting classes have been very it good. It looked like such a cool, fun place, environment to be at. It really did. It looked like a cool, for young people, if they're sitting there watching that, they're like, wow, that looks like a lot of fun. That place, that stadium, that turnover chain, that team, that coach, their defensive coordinator, all of that looks like a lot of fun. I am interested, because you brought this up a couple of times. Because I think college football needs some attitude. They certainly need the Hurricanes. That was evident. The game was a monster, drew a monster rating. But they need some attitude because some of those teams, most of those teams up top are pretty boring teams. Alabama's boring. Ohio State's kind of boring. Baker Mayfield's not. He's got some swag. He's got some attitude. So I love what Miami did. But I am interested when the fans start turning on Miami nationally. Because they got a lot of people rooting for Miami over the weekend, and it's going to be interesting well, to see when they stop rooting I mean, for Miami. Johnny Manziel was fun. College football, I'm telling you, those Miami teams are the reason the rules are all different now in college football. Jimmy Johnson used to allow those guys to enjoy themselves. Now you've got a suffocation with coaches. A suffocation. Right. When Nick Saban's the model, and... Your guys are going to behave and represent sportsmanship. They're going to rep- represent academia, going to represent scholarship, gentlemen. And Miami wasn't that, and the rules were changed to, for, to prevent that from ever being so. To be honest with you, if we're going deep into this, the chain is about the only thing from those overtly black Miami teams that is allowed in 2017. Those Miami teams were unique because they were black, defiant, and loud, and the only thing from that era that's allowed to pass into this antiseptic version of college football is, hey, costume jewelry. (laughs) Like, you're not actually allowing what was that team, which was an urban power line, an an, an electrical current of urban. You're not... The only thing that's linked to it is that chain. Like, you're not actually allowing... The access to everything those teams were, which were, I mean, they were those teams. So are you saying there'll be there's less of a chance that people will start maybe turning on Miami? No, nationally? no, because this team is still black. This team is still black, and the and the people doing ravaging on defense are still black. And there will be there will be a turning on that showboaty black guy rarely gets embraced in sports anywhere professional college anywhere but college makes it even more suffocating because it's sort of like hey you're unpaid you're unpaid labor appreciate the education it won't turn until they cease being the uh the lovable fun underdog if they start having a run like alabama people will hate them and all the things that we're having fun with now might be looked nationally as something different I, i just find interesting the idea that miami is trying through a chain to access that time, but only in the ways that are most comfortable. Because those Miami teams were viewed as dangerous, threatening. This is costume jewelry for now. But if you wear that chain and you place it with those teams, dangerous, threatening, running college football, urinating on sportsmanship, getting the rules on sportsmanship changed, you slap a chain on that, that's not going to quite feel like the costume jewelry fun that these kids are having four straight games because they got four straight turnovers and nobody's ever done that in the history of college football uh, against top, uh, top-ranked top power team. But can it ever get back to that, even if Miami is truly back? And they no, they scrubbed winning. it out of the sport. No, no, it can't ever be that. But that's what I'm saying. This is the only access you have. It's the only portal. It'll never be that again. It'll never be what it was in the 80s and 90s because they changed all the rules to make sure it wouldn't be so. Who's the guy where if he put that chain on in the 80s or 90s where fans would get the angriest? I was going to say Michael Irvin, but he can. He's on offense. But imagine Michael Irvin. No, but Michael <laughs> Michael Irvin was wearing that chain to games. <laughs> Pay that man his money. I'm not even making that <laughs> no, up. I know. It's I'm funny. not even. That's I not know. a joke. I mean, I Michael know. Irvin was in trouble with the law, and he went to the courtroom with a fur and a fedora, and he's like... People were saying, what are you dressed like that for? 
shouldn't dress like that. And he's like, the way you guys want me to dress, that's not my constituents. <laughs> Roy and Chris are going to become fathers very, very soon. Enjoy your sleep now, boys. You guys will enjoy it even more, though, sleeping on a Lisa mattress. Tell them, Stu guys. Yep, I love it. Most comfortable mattress I've ever slept on. You don't believe me? Well... How about Michael Phelps, Joe Flacco, Kirk Cousins, Richard Sherman? They're all sleeping on a Lisa mattress. We're talking about pros and Olympians who could literally choose any mattress, and they chose Lisa just like me. Why? Because Lisa is dangerously comfortable. Order your Lisa mattress. They'll build it, box it, and ship it to your door to enjoy 100 nights risk-free. Go to leesa.com slash Dan and use promo uh, promo code Dan to save even more. Lisa.com slash Dan. That's Lisa.com slash Dan. Promo code Dan. Ah, oh, buddy, this is the Dan Levatar Show on ESPN Radio. If you missed any of the show, you can listen to all three hours of the Dan Levitard Show on demand in the ESPN app, plus our Miami only hour that airs before the show. And now you can subscribe to our best of podcasts. It's all available in the listen tab of the ESPN app. Show her how thankful you are this holiday season with beautiful bouquets from 1-800-Flowers.com. Right now, you can get 24 multicolored roses for just $24. To order, go to 1-800-Flowers.com slash ESPN. Many of you are objecting here to that last segment. All I will tell you is that I lived those Miami years. It shaped a lot of the viewpoints that I have today. I remember how uncomfortable that team made the administration as the administration trafficked in making all the profit from that team. I remember how Howard Schnellenberger had to recruit areas that nobody else was recruiting in open to order to open up the inner cities out here to educational advantages. So you may object to what it is that I'm saying, but I lived it and I saw the NCAA, by rule, get rid of as much of it as it could. And now Alabama is run by Nick Saban. But back then, those renegade programs were tacitly approved by the coaching staffs. And so now you've got Miami back in the game. And you had last week Feinbaum talking about Thug U. Right. That was last week. Yes. Well, I think what he was saying, correct me if I'm wrong, was the Kane fans are always kind of yearning for those kind of days rather than appreciating what Mark Richt has put together here. Enjoy this time because this right. is good stuff. Right, eighties is b- bad, bad stuff. Yes, yes. Bad, well, that's yeah, that's how that one plays out. White guys, white, 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 white. Were you singing that all weekend? Because <laughs> all weekend. I was. I yeah. can't get that out of my head. You can't play it enough. White guys, white, white, white. What was the weekend like for you guys? Guillermo had a bunch of college game day signs, four total. Mike Ryan spent the weekend getting drunk with Marty Smith. You guys were all around college game day, the highest rated college game day of the year. I wouldn't say getting drunk with Marty Smith. Getting drunk around Marty Smith. It's a legit party around that dude. It's crazy. Everyone loves that dude. It's really unusual. I I can't say I've seen a lot of it. I I can't think of anyone like that at ESPN. He's just the, <laughs> the idea. It's just ridiculous that someone would be able to ca- carve out a fun spot in sports, right? That were populated by gas bags like me and Fine Bomb, and and that there that you'd be able to carve out a space where well that's the party that's where the party is and I mean what a genius Marty's sitting there going okay what's missing here in the sports media landscape fun that's right <laughs> it's a it's a weird place that he's found a niche you wouldn't think that it would be a niche but it's a, it appears <laughs> to be a niche should all be having more I, fun I, than- I don't understand though how Guillermo first of all I cannot impress this upon you enough people need to start infiltrating these college game day things with Spanish signs and we blew a golden opportunity here because the rules are different in America for Spanish language people. We get away with everything. You should see the FCC can't do anything with Spanish language radio down here. Say all sorts of foul things. And there was the dirtiest sign in the history of signs that was floating out there in the sea of humanity. And it was in Spanish. And what are the chances anybody in that production 
truck was was could read it. It There's, was it was so genius how they did it too because they made it in the same color and font as Play Like a Champion today, and they even had like the little shamrock on the bottom corner. And then as soon as they got it in, they put that UM sticker on it. And it's like no one knows. It's what the says. dirtiest thing in the history of college game day. On a sign, and because it was in Spanish, nobody knew it. Who's gonna know it? You Corso, you Herb Street, you Reese Davis. I was in the truck for an interesting exchange because it's like the New York Stock Exchange floor. Everyone's shouting back. It's a crazy production. Those people do such an amazing job. But there was one dude in the truck that says, take the pickle ricked sign. The young kids will get it. No one else in the truck gets it, but he's like apparently the guy that says well, they go stuff. to him on young stuff. Yeah, but they didn't have someone to go to on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, go to my yes, yes, that's, that's right. Um, there was they didn't have anyone, but yes, that is that is why these. I'm telling you, people, now you Miamians, you anarchists, wherever you are on college game day, if you think no one's recognizing it in the truck when you're here, imagine if you're ever in Lincoln. Like, go ahead. Go ahead and put it somewhere else. You you can get your signs in in Spanish. Nobody will say anything because I don't understand how this is possible, but the FCC, as far as I can tell, does not regulate anything as regards to Spanish television. I think the FCC is not unlike this ESPN television truck where they're like, what are we watching? If I see Janet Jackson's nipple, no. But I'm telling you, that sign was only 50,000 times worse than that. But it was in Spanish, so you don't. Well, <laughs> that sign was dirty, and it got in, and it, and I just I feel like right now nobody even understands what I'm talking about except Miami. Like not even here's how here is how the absence of Hispanics in media positions. You didn't see it on Deadspin or any of these young people websites either. Because why? Because nobody's speaking Spanish there either. It's just existing in Miami group chats. That's right, where we're all like, wait a minute. How is this renegade thing allowed to be on the air here? Sign checkers, by the way, keep doing the exact same thing. You're doing a great job. Don't look into any of these signs. Right. If you don't understand it, it's good. You realize we blew it, though. We should have been telling people all week to make signs and bring them out to UM and bring signs in Spanish. Can you imagine that? I, we really blew it. I mean, I hope the U is back. If for no other reason, then we get more chances at this. More opportunities to get it right. It would appear it's coming back. <laughs> I think so. I think so. I mean, why wouldn't it come back? It set records. I mean, the games have to be good, obviously, and relevant for it to happen, but it doesn't but appear that they're not going to be. it's been 15 years. It's been 15 years. Yeah, highest rated game day of the year. Now, a lot of that might be this was the biggest college football weekend of the year. So many great games, but I think a lot of curious people tuned in. And Miami, which is not a big college football town, really, in terms of ratings, monster rating for game day locally and the game. How about this? This isn't going to surprise you at all, but it's funny nonetheless, Dugat. So we go out Friday night with the Marty party. Marty Smith, we're in Coconut Grove. We're bobbing around from bar to bar. Mm -hmm. And uh, Greg Cody uh, came out with us, was just lapping up, eating up the fame and celebrity. But he was, he just was every, all the free drinks, he was consuming them. And so he was barely standing up by the end of the night. The last time I'd seen him in this bad of shape was when I had to pull him out of a gutter in New Orleans and he slept with mashed potatoes in his hair. <laughs> like he was a mess. Like, could barely stand up because he was drinking all the adulation and all of the free drinks, okay? Right. Yeah. And so, at some point, we were telling people that that was my father. They were taking pictures with Cody, thinking it was Poppy. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, one of my favorite parts of the evening was when we started doing a Canes chant, right? It was, oh, and then we spelled Cody's name, C-O-T-E, Cody, and the only one who spelled it wrong. With an I, ha! was his son, who has the same last name. <laughs> Voy a reír. Voy a bailar on the Dan Levatar Show on ESPN Radio. Stugatz, let's update the polls and sprinkle in some sound from the NFL this week. And let's start with the poll. All right. The Twitter poll is brought to you by Upside.com. Giving all business travelers the gift of a better travel experience this holiday season. Check them out today at Upside.com, at Levitard Show on Twitter. Is there anything in the world better than Dan being loud wrong? 73% of the audience said no. Mike, can you play some sound of Ben McAdoo uh, not liking anonymous quotes, please? I think they're excited to go play. Uh, excited to go get back on the field when you have a setback like we did last week. 
and uh, you know some uh, some you know fake news, I guess you could call it, like we had this week. Uh, some drama. I think it's good to go out and play the game you love to play. Why is it fake news? It's anonymous quotes. By fake news, you're saying that you you doubt that they're real. No, I'm saying it's it's anonymous. No names behind it. But anonymous is different than fake. It, you, I'll let you define it for me then. <laughs> it's anonymous. But if there's players in your locker room who feel that way, that that's still an issue, right? It's not an issue. I'd like to help the players who have issues. It's not an issue for, for the team. If we can handle it, we're strong. What's better, great sex or Dan being loud wrong? 54% of the audience said Dan being loud wrong. Mike, play some sound of Ryan Clark ripping Blake Bortles. I hate him. Oh, how I hate him. Why? Let me tell you why I hate him. Because everybody on that team <laughs> deserves to win but the quarterback. Oh. <laughs> he tries to lose the he game. Does. Like, he, does. He, does, he does his absolute <laughs> best to lose the game. I know. I'm talking about these dudes going crazy on defense <laughs> in yeah. Saxonville. They getting picks. <laughs> Leonard Fournette back there <laughs> running for his life today. You know why? Because they ain't scared you going to pass no, it. Jack. No. I said the exact same Trey thing. Boston. Best receiver today for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Oh, yeah. Caught the most passes, but Yikes. he on the other team. <laughs> so great. If Rick Neuheisel screams in the forest, can anyone hear it? 85% of the audience said no. What did Charles Woodson have to say this weekend? Don't we always have com- conversations about player safety? Like, you can't make the argument about player safety. Let's take Adrian Peterson, for example. A week ago, he, he carried the ball 37 times. And you talked about older players. But just players in general, he, he carried the ball 37 times, and then he turns right back around and plays on the Thursday night and carries the ball probably another 20 but, but times. But play, he's playing guys that are doing the same thing. I understand that. That doesn't make it better. You know what I'm saying? I'm, talk, I'm talking about us. This is what we did for a living, man. And we're talking about player safety. Let's protect all the players. If Rick Neuheisel screams on CBS, can anyone hear it? 86% of the audience said no. Keep going. Read a couple of more polls. Okay, that means he has a better chance of being heard in the forest than he does on CBS. (laughs) That's correct. Uh, Best insult, idiot, moron, loon, fool, imbecile. 38% of the audience said imbecile. You were right on that one, Dan. Is Patricia faking it with a pencil behind his ear and a laminated play sheet? 87% of the audience said yes. Should we play the Dan is Wrong montage every segment this show? 74% of the audience said yes. And then you got mad at us for doing it. Hey, you, do you want Jeb Bush? <laughs> 75% of the audience said no. <laughs> is there anyone in the history of it's a Kane's thing, less it's a Kane thing, than Jeb Bush? <laughs> 73% of the audience said no. Play some sound of Lewis Riddick ripping McAdoo. There's three tiers of leadership. There's credibility, there's competency, and then what kind of impact do you have on others? And mm-hmm. right now, Coach McAdoo is failing in those areas. Exactly. And when you start putting the point in the finger at the players and going, look, exactly. you need to motivate yourself, you're lacking credibility because now players are sitting there looking at you like, really, dude? That's what he you're started saying to this. us now? Yeah. That's he, what happened. He started his tenure throwing people under the bus, whether it was Odell with some of the things he was going through, um, the off the field or the sideline issues, or Eli Manning not yep. playing a certain way. And he's continued to do that. The thing is, bro, you're in charge of coaching this yep. team. You're not yep. doing your job either. Point the finger at yourself, and now the guys are rally around you. Is Blake Bortles going to stumble and bumble and four interception his way to the Super Bowl? 54% of the audience <laughs> said yes. Yes! Ryan Clark wins the weekend! We will talk to you mañana. This was the Dan Levatar Show on ESPN Radio. You can listen to the Dan Levatar Show with the Stugats 10 to 1 Eastern on ESPN Radio. And you can watch on ESPNU. You can always count on Bud Light, just like you can always count on Tailgate Terry. Without Tailgate Terry, you wouldn't have cold Bud Lights and seven-layer dip at every pregame. That's 56 layers per season, just the right amount if you ask Terry. Tailgate Terry is famous among friends. He deserves a Bud Light. Enjoy responsibly Bud Light beer, ABC St. Louis, Missouri.